our 54th hymn, The Biblical Truth of Our Hymns, Wonderful Words of Life. Let me read here. It's a tool that for our senses of ear, voice, and mind. 18 times wonderful words is repeated. Wonderful words of life, 12 times. And repetition of teaching of text and tune. And the poetry employs to help us and teach us. Words personified throughout the hymn as teaches wooing us to heaven, offering a pardon and peace. Bliss, filled bliss, creative. Throughout this hymn, with a strong W sound, it helps us to remind and re repetition, and not that of contemporary music repetition today, where the repetition of this hymn lays hold the story of the Lord Jesus Christ in the words of the Bible. Repetition, not because I'm just going to write something, get it with, and, you know, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. But to reinforce the heart that a hymn such as Wonderful Words of Life can be remembered outside the church house, in the car driving home, in the car driving somewhere, or mopping or cleaning, or even just sit in your easy chair. Philip uh, Paul Bliss, a great revivalist, with a great history. Sing them over again to me. What? The wonderful words of life. What are the wonderful words of life? There are so many in the Bible. But the base of the foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the base is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that has the Son has everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wonderful words of life. Many, many more. Let me more of their beauty see. See what? Let me see Jesus. The Bible says there is no beauty that which is desiring, but for me there is beauty because he is my savior. He is my salvation. He is my all in all. He is the blessed hope. And through the Bible reading, Old or New Testament, I can see Jesus. Let me see. Wonderful words of life. There are people out there who quote the Bible, King James, and don't even know it. By the skin of my teeth comes out of the book of Job. Uh, the apple of, the, of my eye comes out of the Song of Solomon. The circle of the earth comes out of the Bible. Wonderful words of life and great uh, quotes and expressions that people don't even know. Hellfire preaching. A go to hell. Are expressions that come out of the Bible. Wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. Jesus. There's no beauty that we should desire him again. The beauty that Jesus has to me as my Savior. Teach me faith. I thought it comes automatically. No. Faith is a cup that has to be filled. In order to be filled, you got to empty yourself to be filled with faith. As I ask the Holy Spirit and God to deal and help me with these messages that we do, and as we come 
to the message, I am filled of the Spirit of God. And when I come to the end of the message, I am drained. And it's remarkable to see after a message on how tired one gets. And yet it is a proper prayer all the time to be filled with faith. The world and Satan will diminish your faith, will remove your faith. That only Jesus Christ and the word of God in the daily reading and study will build that faith back up. And duty. It is our duty, Jesus said, to serve the Lord. And yet, it's a free will. It is our duty to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Yet, it's a free will. You don't have to. You ought to. Pray without ceasing. You don't have to. Rejoice evermore in the God that suffered and died for us. It's a duty to give God the honor and glory. Yet, you don't have to. I ought to, but you don't have to. We'll look at this. Christ Jesus, the Blessed One, capital O, the Blessed Hope, waiting for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is he the Blessed One in your life? What one? Well, what is one? One is a starting off county. One, two, three, four, five. Is Christ the number one on your list? On your to-do list, is it Christ for the day? In the order events of your being, whatever realm it is, is Christ number one? When you're going to make an important decision, is Christ that number one? Christ, the blessed, happy one, gives to all wonderful words of life. How God does it, who is Jesus, in remarkable ways that there is no other equal. Not everybody's saved the same way. Not everybody gets the gospel some, the same way. There are uh, hundreds, thousands, different tracks, maybe millions of different tracks out there. There are many Christians who go out in a public ministry many different ways. Uh, you could be witness to on a telephone, you could be witness in a car, you could be witness at a desk at work, you could be witness over a, a, a meal at a fast food joint, in a living room, dining room, kitchen, Park, public event, private event. The countless ways of God witnessing to man is countless. It gives all the wonderful, wonder, the wonderful words of life. Is every man, according to Romans chapter one, every man gets the gospel. Every man gets that true identity of who God is. And he can choose to be educated out of it. He can choose a religion to be religion from it. For every man is born with the identity there is a God. And I can remember as a young child growing up in, in New London, Connecticut, a little spot who knows where it can be. Me and my friend, I think it was Kevin, I, I don't remember particularly, we would slice earthworms to God. What was that? What was the, I mean, words to say in the Bible to, to take earthworms and cut? No, but in the Bible it says there's a God. And from earth, offering earthworms to God, half cutting them in half, to look into the heavens and say, you know, that's something superior. And to say, God, you're out there. I don't know who you are, but you're God. 
And to go through 12 years of public school teaching and to say no to evolution and yes to God. Even growing up as a Roman Catholic in a Catholic church to say, though they're, they're, the, the system of the church is wrong, but into my heart there, there's God. running to the altar to meet God, not the religion, but God, and looking upon Jesus who's nailed on the cross. What am I going to do with that? And that is the story of a little boy who grew up in a place called New London, Connecticut. My story is not the same as anybody else's story. And that is how God revealed himself to me, believe it or not, out of the Catholic Church. But before that, offering earthworms and looking to the skies and seeing that there is a God. And the Lord just showing me more and more and more and believing more and more and more. And here I am today. I am saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no religion. There is no works. At least I should bow. And there is nothing but the blood of Jesus. And God is Jesus. And Jesus is God. And I am able to teach God's word. Wow. Who gives all the wonderful words of life. The Bible is, is not the Bible. It's the wonderful words of life from Genesis to Revelation. I believe it all. Though there are places in it I don't understand. Sinner. That's me. Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner. You can't find many sinners today. Oh, they got complexes, they got diseases, they got phobias, they got AHD, they've got uh, anxiety, they've got troubles, they got problems, it's family, it's their background, it's their, their color, it's their race, it's their gender, it's, it's a sinner. All have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. And whatever disease or phobia, whatever you put it on, you're doing the same thing Adam did in the garden with God. It's your fault. And it's her fault. Eve, it's his fault. King Saul, well, the people made me do it. I had to do it. It's because of the people. How about the very fact is, whatever it is, it's called sin, and you have sinned against God. Listen to the loyal, excuse me, listen to the loving call. What is the loving call? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting heart, life. Whatsoever. Uh, uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There it is. You realize I just quoted to you from the Bible? That's not something I made up. That's not something a teacher made up. That's not something a pastor made up. That's something that the Bible wrote through the Holy Spirit. I just gave you the wonderful words of life and how to be saved. No traditions. No catechisms, no magazines, just the wonderful words of life out of the King James Bible. Wonderful words of life. All so freely given. Salvation of God is free. The love of God is free. There is no price tag. Put your wallet away. If you have any goodness, though, the Bible says there's none that doeth good, put it away. Put the religion in the closet. And freely believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Wooing us to heaven. You know what God wants? He wants a lost man to come to Christ and believe on Christ. 
and be welcome in the gates of New Jerusalem through Jesus Christ alone. God's not willing that any should perish. Uh, Ezekiel, God's not pleased with the wicked and the die. Why will you die in your sins, O Israel? I'm not getting that verse correct. God's not the one who's going to throw you in hell. You yourself will put yourself in hell. You will be giving the full authority and credit of going to hell through yourself and not God. When Jesus says, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That's not Jesus sending you to hell. You are doing yourself to hell. You're the one who has rejected the free, loving gift of God. You have decided to go your way and not the way, the truth, and the life. You have gone against the Bible, the wonderful words of life. Jesus said, I am the life. John the Baptist says, there is only life through the Son. And when you reject God, reject Jesus and the Word, a man goes into hell because he's rejected Jesus Christ. And that's man's fault, not God. Listen, if I'm going down the road and I, I know a bridge is out, and you're going to go down that road, you're going to fall into a abyss. And I put every barricade, I put every cone, I put every neon sign, I put whatever I can. I even try to block the road with those New Jersey barriers. And you still go around and fall off into that abyss. That's your fault, not my fault. And when God has put his word in front of you some way, somehow, remember he gives through all the wondrous works, and you reject him, it's your fault you go to hell, not God. Today, the Bible can be all anywhere. If you've got an internet connection, you've got access to the Bible in the, in the words of life. That's where the Bible says, none seek after God. Oh, I do too. You can, right now, you can you can punch on Google, you can punch on uh, Firefox, you can punch on uh, Edge, you can punch on whatever web server you're using. You can get your stupid phone and, and put in the words of life. You can say the Bible way of the new birth and how to be saved through Jesus Christ alone. And I, I guarantee within the search, you'll find a proper way of salvation. But you will be tuned to religion. You will be tuned to how well you can do what you need to do to get to heaven. That's not life. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Gospel is the good news is Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You know what that call is? In Romans 10 it says God loves the feet of the one that carries the good tidings. That comes out of Isaiah. And, and say it again before we read. Gives to all the wonderful words of life. There are so many ways out there that the gospel goes out. People may come knocking on your door. People may interrupt your life by street preaching. Wherever you go. You may be sitting in a toilet and there's a gospel track. You may be going to a payphone there's a gospel track. You may work for, a, for a, a, a company and you open up the envelope to receive someone's check and there's a gospel check. Your co-worker may be talking to you and showing you an open Bible. Your children have been, may be invited to a Bible study at a church where the true gospel it will be preached and presented outside the nonsense. You may have someone pull you aside in a fountain square and say, hey, let me show you something about Jesus. There are a thousand different ways and others I don't even want to put a number on that God could reach out to somebody the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, there's a story I know from a missionary in Mongolia, a desert region, that a guy found the Bible in the sands of the desert of Mongolia. Picked up that Bible, read it, found a church in the desert, 
and came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee there are probably much more pleasant and wonderful and great testimonies of regions without electricity, without the means of, what word am I trying to find? The modernization. There's probably some tribe, some dark area that we would call dark without phones, without automobiles and all that, that a man has given up his life. It says, I'm going to go to this area. I'm going to bring the wonderful words of life to people who serve wood, metal, or wherever gods they have. That's the gospel call. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's the gospel call. And myself. And I'm not going to brag, but I am right now other places throughout the world with the gospel. I support missionaries. I'm on, I'm in Africa. I'm in Israel. And other places. Through the internet ministry that I have right now, I'm in Indonesia. There's a man in Texas with my, one of them. I'm all over the world. I have been through the internet ministry. I have been where the gospel has been blocked. It has been stopped. It is illegal to carry a Bible. I have been in countries where <coughs> you can have your head chopped off. You can end up in jail for having what we're doing right now. Where no man has gone, God said, hey, you just do what you do with that gospel. I'll get it out for you. And my butt is planted in my seat. You don't have to get on an airplane. You don't have to get to a, a slow boat to China. We got the realm of gospel tracks. They go far enough. Put a, put a gospel track in all your bills. Man, Tennessee, Arizona, wherever your bills go. Family, friends, send them out. The gospel called wonderful words. Don't go, oh, we're going to beat the tribulation. We're going to beat the Antichrist. Oh, what, what, what do you think the earthquakes are doing? That's not the gospel. That's Satan trying to take us off of what the gospel truly is. Oh, come, we'll have clothes. We'll have, we'll have all this kind of entertainment for the kiddies. That's not the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scripture, was buried and arose again the third day according to scripture. Oh, we do that BBS. Yeah, five minutes and 20 minutes of other BS. Oh, you shouldn't be talking like that. It's what it is. Bible calls it dung. You just don't like a guy who's going to preach it out right way it is. Call it what it is. It stinks in the eyes of God. But the feet are beautiful feet. Offer pardon. Now what is a pardon? A pardon can only be legally given if a man will confess that he is at fault guilty of the crime. Now I know every president that has to get out of office has to give out so many pardons to so many people it's their tradition. That's not a pardon. That is absolutely no pardon, especially if that guy has any friendship with the president. Because a legal biting definition of a pardon is when they come to you in jail or prison or, or dungeon and they open up your door and say, Sir, are you guilty of the crime that you are in here for? Any answer besides yes there is no means for a pardon. And I've been in the prison ministry, and oh, oh it was you know, circle, oh, it was my friend, oh, it was this, oh. It. Get back in jail, let me close up the gates, we can't help you. Move on to the next one. And today, what lacks in the church of salvation in the gospel is repentance. And repentance is the acknowledge that you are the sinner. We've already looked at that word. 
and we can't give it cute little names like we've done for sins with shacking up and it's an affair and all that. We can't give it cute names like AHD and uh, you know it, it's a phobia and you know let's hear pills and all that. It's a sin, and you need to be guilty to get the pardon of God. And saying this prayer is not going to save your soul. Don't like it? That's what the Bible says for us. And peace to all. You want peace? Hear the gospel. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Admit to God that you're the sinner that you are. Receive that pardon, and that's a wonderful thing that comes from the Holy Spirit that comes and dwells with you. Once you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells with you. You are made part of God's family by being a child of God through Jesus Christ. You get the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit, you get his fruit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, and others, nine fruits. By receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, man, you get a lot of ton of things, and there's more to speak of. True peace and true joy is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful words of life. Everything I'm talking to you about, everything that we're reading about, is found in a King James Bible. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're not going to find that in a modern Bible. Jesus, only Savior. I read an article today that whatever Pope it is in, in the Catholic Church, he has now officially made Mary higher than Jesus and now proclaims that Mary is the door to salvation. Phony baloney on your cockapooty boo boo. Because that's nonsense. Mary did not say, I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus did. You can take your religion to hell, because that's where it's going to go. Jesus is the only way to salvation. It's not through your grandmother, it's not through your mother, it's not by baptism, it's not what you can do, it's not what religion can do, it's not what no other man can do but the man Christ Jesus. And salvation is not of any woman, like no woman can preach anything according to the Bible. That plain and simple. Sanctify means set apart. I am going to set myself apart from the world and from sin and for the negativity, and I'm going to set myself to serve the holy and righteous God. I'm going to fail. I'm going to sin. I'm going to trip. I'm going to stumble. But I'm going to get back up and do the best I can. Sanctify. This is for God and God alone. Hands off it, world. Forever. That's a period of time. That is no period of time. Forever is no clocks, no watches, no calendars, no period of time, no sundials. It just goes. Beautiful words. How's your Bible reading? How does it feel to you? Uh, one more chapter to do. Listen, I've been through that. I've been through my Bible. Oh. Really? How many times I got to read number seven? And I get halfway through and say, you know what? I didn't read number seven. I got to go back to do it again. Get through those names, all those names. And you got to go back and do it again because you know what? They weren't beautiful to you. Wonderful words. In the King James only. I sure would not want the good, beautiful words of the Living Bible, you SOB. SOB is in the Living Bible, written for children. It's not beautiful words. Oh, perverse and son of a rebellious woman, that's, that's much better. <laughs> beautiful words. Beautiful words, it is finished. When you look at the suffering and the agony, it took Jesus to say that. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He is drowning in his own body fluids on that cross, and yet he can speak eternal life to that dying thief. 
wonderful words. Wonderful words that God will save anybody who comes to Christ for a party. No matter how vile and wicked that person is, and no much how much the Baptist church hates that person. God will be willing to save President or uh, past President Obama and Janet Pelosi if they would come to Christ and say, ask for the pardon, the guiltiness they are, and the Baptist church would boo it. Anybody can say, if Adolf Hitler, before his dying breath, if he were to confess Jesus Christ as Savior, I don't know. He would be in glory today, absent from the body and present with the Lord, if he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. As with Charles Mason or Jimmy Hoffa or Emilia Earnhardt or anybody. Wonderful words that can save your soul. April 21st, 1987, wonderful words. And I, I knelt down at my grandma's coffee uh, coffee table and I asked Christ to save me. I asked Christ to pardon me. I did not want to go to hell. Wonderful words. Wonderful words the next afternoon to go to my dad and say, Dad, I don't want you to go to hell. Wonderful words that I have taken part and been part of people who have trusted Christ as their Savior. Wonderful words that I have been part in serving and helping missionaries and I've gone nowhere from my seat. Wonderful words that I preach on the street to people that are lost and comforting words to those that are saved. Listen, when I preach the gospel only on the street, it's not just to the lost people. It's also to those that are saved and say, wow, somebody's still doing what the Bible says to do. Wow, what is that? What is he doing? I'm a Christian. I go to church. I don't know. What is that guy doing? And if somebody really want to know, say, I'm going to go look at my Bible and find what that guy's doing. It would be wonderful words when God reveals to that person, that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. See, they're doing it here. They did it here. They did it here. Even the Old Testament people did what he's doing. I'm telling you, I got involved in about 2005. I got involved with the public ministry by hearing about a guy and his daughter sitting on the side of a highway somewhere. I don't know where I heard it. I don't know how I heard it. But there's a guy sitting on the side of a highway somewhere with his daughter holding a scripture sign. That's got me started. I don't know. By me preaching or my daughter or my wife holding the sign, passing out gospel. I don't know who else has gone from that and say, you know what? I'm going to go home. I'm going to do the same thing. Maybe not the same thing, but I'm going to have the same spirit and do whatever God. I don't know how much has grown. But I know somewhere a guy and his daughter, wherever they may be today, are going to reap rewards because some loud mouth guy said, because they're doing it, I'm going to do it too. I didn't get side of a highway. I went to a courthouse. I and went, went to a high school. Went in the middle of the town square. And went to a farmer's market. And went to a flea market. Why? Because I've got the wonderful words of life. I don't want to hear about your ball team. I don't want my, my brother, all oh, the baseball. The, 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 shut up about that garbage. You're going to forget next year. And if you do remember, you're foolish. Let's see what scripture you know. You can name all the guys on the on the ball playing team, name all the apostles. Wonderful words of life. Look what it did for Peter. Wonderful words of life. The Gospel of John starts off with the word, capital W. That's Jesus Christ. Beautiful words. There is no beauty that we should desire him, yet Jesus Christ is beautiful to those that are saved. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. Are you reading your Bible today? Good. Glory to God. Is it wonderful words? Or is it hurry up? Is it dull? Repent. Ask God. Say, God, my reading of my Bible, my prayer life is not what it should be. There was a time I was on fire. Where have we gone wrong, Lord? Where have I gone wrong? Get that flame back. Get the wonderful, get the beauty, get the, the wonderful words of life back. 
glory to God in the highest and peace to all men. That was the, that was the angel speaking to the shepherd. The peace comes from God. The world gives peace, Jesus said, but it's temporal, it costs. Wonderful words of life.